Hey, what's up everybody? Today we're looking at Starry Messenger Cosmic Perspectives on Civilization by Neil deGrasse Tyson. I'm sure I don't need to tell anybody who Neil deGrasse Tyson is. He's one of the most famous scientists in America. He's written a number of best-selling books such as Astrophysics for People in a Hurry and A Brief Welcome to the Universe, both of which I enjoyed. But I wanted to review this book because my friend got me tickets to see Neil deGrasse Tyson, thank you Melissa, and I wanted to make sure to read his latest book, especially in case I get the chance to get it signed. So anyway, Tyson is an astrophysicist, but he's not necessarily known to the public for his breakthroughs as a scientist, but for his role as a science communicator and popularizer. And that's precisely the point of this book. It's a kind of tribute to and lesson in scientific thinking. Neil tries to show the reader how to look at something through a removed perspective, a cosmic perspective. How would we evaluate a situation with our own cultural bias removed from the equation? While this is difficult to do, it's something that practice can help with. This is a call back to the idea that we've heard Carl Sagan talk about many times, which is to step outside of the anthropocentric viewpoint. We all have an anthropocentric viewpoint, and that's a huge source of bias. And we know that bias is very bad when trying to ascertain truth. This book is about how science is used to discover truths. These are things which must be objectively verified and independently repeated and corroborated. Tyson says that, Science and mathematics are like a universal language because the laws that make something true for one person are the same that make it true for another. It doesn't matter what side of the border you live on or what political party you support or what gods you worship or any of the things that seem to divide human beings. What's true is true. The aim with science is to remove as much personal bias as possible and to think of any way which might prove your hypothesis wrong and test it. And most importantly, science and the knowledge science uncovers is true whether or not we believe it. It does not require belief. Tyson says about science, quote, Do whatever it takes to avoid fooling yourself into believing that something is true when it is false, or that something is false when it is true, end quote. Tyson believes, as do I, that a more rational population would make the world a much better place for everyone. We humans can be highly irrational. This book's goal is to convince people to arm themselves with rationality and critical thinking skills. We live in a world with a lot of misinformation and charlatans in it, and sometimes just learning to ask the right questions can mean the difference between being taken in by a charlatan and gaining a better understanding of something. Tyson focuses on topics that seem to divide people like abortion, color and race, gender and identity, and law. And he does this while discussing scientific principles like statistics and probability. Neil shares a funny anecdote where 4,000 physicists are staying at the MGM Hotel in Las Vegas, and needless to say, when they left, the casino had a record low in their earnings. These are physicists. They're known for their understanding of mathematics, statistics, and probability. So what did these geniuses do to upset the casino so much? They simply didn't gamble. They knew better. They understood that them gambling would be in the house's interest, not theirs. And there's a lot of stuff like that in this book. So how did I feel about the book overall? The main theme of this book is quite possibly more up my alley than any other topic I've read on, so I love that. But this wasn't the best book on this topic that I've read. This book is a work of persuasive writing, and I tried to imagine... If the message in this book wasn't already one that I stand by wholeheartedly, would this work have persuaded me to? While I can't answer that for sure, I lean toward probably not. I think Neil is a pretty good writer, but I do feel that argument is his weak side. Even as a person who agrees with a lot of the stuff that he writes in this book, I found myself thinking, come on man, we can make a better case than this. 
while I did like the book, I'll say that I think he's better at writing physics books. While I do think that this one is worth reading, even if you do already understand the message, I can think of a few better books on critical thinking and rationality, at least in my opinion. I'm thinking about books like The Demon Haunted World by Carl Sagan and Pale Blue Dot by Carl Sagan, Nonsense on Stilts by Massimo Pigliucci, I really like Critical Thinking for College Students by John Stratton, and one of my favorites, The Magic of Reality by Richard Dawkins. Neil is very good at using a poetic style to incite wonder, and I think that this is one of the things that makes him such a good educator. And This book didn't have as much of that as I'd have expected, knowing the author, but I still enjoyed it. I really liked the idea of the cosmic perspective, and I really do think this is an important exercise in thinking. Neil does acknowledge that this book does feature some of his bias, so I'd be interested to hear how other readers receive this. Neil does lean into the liberal political realm, and it comes across in some of his opinions in this book. In many cases, he'll be using some of the precepts of science to support his position, but other times he does, just doesn't and he can come off a little bit condescending at times. If you're a conservative or religious, you probably won't like this book very much, but who knows, you may find it challenging in a really good way, and I'd encourage you to give it a look. Okay, that's it for this one, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're interested in rationality, if you'd like a little more information on scientific and critical thinking, definitely check out Starry Messenger by Neil deGrasse Tyson.